A rare on-the-record denial from the Bank of England as it declared there would be no meetings to discuss problems of Britain's biggest financial institutions. The bank was forced to go public after a series of rumours swept the stock market this morning that at one stage sent shares in HBOS, the Halifax Bank of Scotland group, plunging by 17%. The Financial Services Authority also stepped in, warning investors not to spread false rumours. So, what's going on? Well, our economics correspondent Faisalism is here to explain. Faisal, why this continuing nervousness. Well, just when you thought it was safe to creep back into financial markets after yesterday's euphoria, Alex, it appears Dr. Doom's back with a vengeance aimed at the British banking sector and targeted rather specifically at HBOS, Halifax Bank of Scotland, whose share price this morning tanked by 17%, but all not quite as it seemed. Um, the, uh, that violent movement in share price in part precipitated by two rumours, uh, one around funding concerns about HBOS and secondly, uh, suggestions that the key Bank of England personnel had been wiping their diary clean, cancelling holiday, cancelling foreign trips to attend a crisis meeting here in London. Well, uh, the Bank of England extraordinarily got on the phone and were publicly denying both rumours and very specifically told us in a statement that uh, no meetings have taken place or been scheduled to discuss problems with any institution in the UK. At the same time, unsurprisingly, HBOS went on the offensive saying the rumours were complete and utter nonsense. But all of this goes to show just how febrile financial markets are right at the moment and they may well remain that way. Well, indeed, violent movements of shares, tanking was the, uh, the verb you used. Why would anyone want to drive down shares deliberately, as it were? Is that not what's happening? It's, it's an accident it's because of this nervousness? Well, we all know about making money when share prices go up. You can also make money by taking a position on shares on, when on the way down. It's a process called shorting. It involves borrowing stock at a future date and getting it back a bit later. Or you can also have the same effect by taking a bet on the perceived credit worthiness of a bank or indeed any other stock. If you're nefariously minded, uh, you want to spread rumours and you spread a rumour at a particularly credible time, at this rather febrile time, you can make money uh, when that rumour spreads and the share price falls you pocket a fairly nice uh, profit. Now, the FSA was alive to this and in its own extraordinary statement came out rather violently against it. Uh, the FSA told, uh, told the market, we will not tolerate market participants taking advantage of the current market conditions to commit abuse by spreading false rumours and dealing on the back of them. So that rather a strong ticking off to unnamed individuals by the FSA. Well, it is, well you began this by saying just when you thought it was safe to go back into the markets, a bad thing happened. Does it end here? I mean, recent experience suggests not. Briefly. Well, the specific rumour we have had strongly denied then by all the authorities in the bank involved doesn't mean that the more general picture of the British banking sector uh, under a bit of stress isn't true. Uh, two uh, trends, the uh, it benefited the British banking sector, strong housing market bubble, which some say is about to burst, and many profits made out of these complex financial risk instruments called derivatives. Both things looking a bit sketchy at the moment. Uh, one market participant to told me that there was a financial witch hunt uh, on the way. Another said a financial riot was happening. Right, we need a silver lining. It's a long way uh, out a long there way off. somewhere. Yes. Faisal, thanks very much indeed. And the markets had, as you might expect, a turbulent day off the back of that news. At the close, the index of 100 leading shares was down by 60 points. A short time ago, the pound was down against the dollar by more than two and a half cents. And sterling was also down against the euro by nearly one and a half cents. So on News at 10. A conspiracy to break the bank, how Britain's biggest lender became the target of a city whispering campaign. Still reeling from the recent turmoil in the markets, the city was rocked again today by a share scandal tied to the credit crunch. Traders have been accused of starting rumours to bring down the share price of Britain's biggest lender so they could profit as a result. The scheme put billions of pounds of savers' money at risk. Our business correspondent Mark Edo investigates allegations of wicked whispers that threatened to break the bank. Minutes after the markets opened, the whispers and the rumours began to take effect. The word was that HBOS, the owner of the country's biggest mortgage lender, needed the Bank of England to bail it out. But the rumours were not true. In a wave of selling the shares of HBOS, the owner of Halifax fell by more than 17% before the Bank of England was forced to step in and deny the rumours. In the city, many say they've never seen anything like it. 
and it shows just how nervous the mood is right now. The stock market and the banking industry in general are built on confidence and at the moment there is a distinct lack of confidence so rumours that would normally be dismissed as f verging on the ridiculous are actually being given some credibility now which is a bit of a sad sign. Now the city's watchdog, the Financial Services Authority, is investigating whether some traders have been spreading the false rumours while doing something called short selling to make a quick profit. And here's how it works. Trader A borrows shares in a company from Trader B and sells them on at their market price. Trader A then spreads rumours about that company so the value of its shares fall. Trader A then buys back those shares at the new low price. He then returns the original shares to Trader B and profits from the difference. This practice is often called trashing and cashing. Uh, the FSA, if they uh, were able to prove this, would regard this as being at the most serious end of the spectrum and penalties could include either on the civil level um, being excluded from the industry, heavy fines or even indeed criminal uh, sanctions including imprisonment. But even if the false rumours have cost investors like pension funds millions of pounds, it's a difficult crime for the authorities to prove. And it may be difficult to stop. Mark Edo, News at 10. The 10 o'clock news with Hugh Edwards and Riz Latif. An official investigation is underway into the pattern of share dealing in some of Britain's biggest banks. The alarm was raised after a wave of rumours suggesting that HBOS, Halifax Bank of Scotland, was short of funds. More than 140 million shares were traded, forcing the share price sharply down and trading was in fact suspended for a time. HBOS said the rumours were ill-founded, malicious lies. Our economics editor Evan Davis has the story. Real or imagined, the idea of one thing leading to another and dominoes toppling gives rise to fear in the city and rumours. But were people out to make money by betting on bank shares falling? We have a very recent uh, example, Bear Stearns. In a period of three, maybe four days, the rumour mill started working so that all the customers of Bear Stearns began to pull their money out of the bank and the result was a fire sale of the organisation. So rumours do have a direct effect. Today did see some unusual developments. After the market opened at 8, shares rose this morning, but bank shares soon fell sharply. Before 9, HBOS shares were down 17%. At around 11am, the Bank of England called news organisations to rubbish rumours that a bank was seeking help and that the governor had cancelled an overseas trip. Then at lunchtime, the Financial Services Authority launched an investigation, warning there's been a series of completely unfounded rumours about UK financial institutions. We will not tolerate market participants taking advantage of the current conditions to commit abuse by spreading false rumours and dealing on the back of them. Bank shares recovered and by the market close, HBOS was down 7%, RBS and Alliance and Leicester were down 3 Usually in the city you'd bet on markets going up, but in recent years it's become commonplace and easy to bet on prices going down. It's quite simple, if you think the price of second-hand scooters will fall, you borrow one from your friend, you sell it to somebody at a high price, and then when the price has fallen you buy it back return it to your mate and you've made a profit on the deal. But you don't have to do it with scooters, you can do it with shares. Short selling is done with the owner's permission, it's perfectly normal. But rumour mongering is not. So can the FSA catch the culprits? For FSA to track down the source of that rumour, that rumour you might call patient zero, is going to be as difficult as trying to find out where a virus originated. In particular, a skillful rumour maker does not leave written messages with his name on it, does not leave named messages on an answer phone. It'll be very difficult to trace it back. Right now, rumours can have an enormous effect on bank share prices. They're dangerously plausible, and denials can be dismissed as mere words. All because of the fraught state of sentiment in the market. It's easy to talk in abstract of fear stalking the city, but right now, psychology does seem to be driving things as much as economics. And Evan's with me. Evan, it's in fact your last appearance on the Indeed. 10 o'clock news as economics editor. Uh, and it's a pretty turbulent time to be leaving us. So why did you put the context of the last few months, uh, I suppose, against the backdrop of the last decade? Well, it's, it's fascinating. It's that last thought. Psychology does seem to play a very important part, doesn't it? In fact, one of the hottest areas in economics at the moment is whether 
we're as rational as we like to think we are. You know, there's a very interesting finding, very relevant one, that we tend to believe and see the evidence out there that supports the view we already have. So today, when everybody's feeling a bit gloomy and thinks things are bad, they latch on to evidence that seems to support that view. And yet, over the last five years, with house prices rising and the times good, you could sell people anything. They believed the evidence was good. And that, that's the theory. It perhaps explains why some of the most apparently rational and well-paid people can make that sort of Homer Simpson-type mistake of repeating the error that this cycle will be different from previous ones. They sort of reach for that donut, even though they know from repeated experience it isn't, it isn't attainable. And it's an incredibly human instinct, Hugh. So I suspect this upswing we've seen over the last few years and the downswing we're seeing now, don't expect that'll be the last one. OK, Evan, I know the whole team will want me to say good luck on the Today programme, so enjoy it. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much.